In America, early this morning, the nation's racing fraternity paused for two minutes for the running of the 117th Kentucky Derby. Held at Louisville's famous Churchill Downs, the Derby is the first leg of the American Triple Crown. The other legs being the Peakness Stakes at Pimlico and the Belmont Stakes at Belmont Park. Almost 150,000 spectators were crammed into Churchill Downs, a few of them able to catch a glimpse of Heartbreak Alley, the infamous straight. Let's sample the atmosphere of the big race. As it crackles over the speakers, it may sound a little old, a little sentimental. But when they play My Old Kentucky Home at Churchill Downs on this first Saturday in May, it's not just Southern Burles who shed tears. The Americans say there's no two minutes in the world like it. The two minutes of the Kentucky Derby, in which 15 Colts and one Girling will run one and a quarter miles for the famed Blanket of Roses and a place in racing history. They've been coming here since 1875 to the old wooden grandstand with its majestic twin spires to witness all the thrill and grace of the thoroughbred art form. Last year, 92-year-old Francis Genter experienced it even more profoundly. After half a century trying to get a horse into the Kentucky Derby, she won it. Great stories abound here, it's part of the Derby tradition. Tradition! 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 Where are the clowns? Like is a cabaret, old chum. Come to the cabaret. Music publisher Tommy Volando knows a hit when he sees one, and he found it in a cult named Fly So Free. A two-year-old champion last year, he swept three major lead-up races to this one before losing to strike the gold in the recent bluegrass stakes. Getting to the Kentucky Derby is very much like getting to, finally getting to Broadway with a show and having it open and uh, be a hit. It's, it's the same kind of thing. It's an exciting, wonderful, great experience. That's why I'm so glad we're in it, Elizabeth and I, because it's made us uh, closer together and uh, something we can share and have fun with and, and, and love. Three candidates stand out as the most likely to spoil Tommy Volando's latest show. The favourite, Hansel, a horse who'd beaten his rivals so easily in his previous two starts, it's hard to know just how good he might be. Best pal, yet to win this year, but expected to run the race of his life after some exceptional track work and strike the gold, son of the famed Alida, who died last year after a career in which he finished second here in 1978 and then produced 1987 winner Ali Sheba. 130,000 people handed over $5 million in sure things, calculated guesses and long shots, and they weren't getting any help from special guest Storman Norman Schwarzkopf. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, uh, as with any great campaign, up until now, we've been very careful not to give away any military secrets in advance. Saddam may be watching, and we don't want to give him a leg up on anything, not even horse racing. These are the men who will steer their mounts home, told as ever to keep their silks clean because they might get their picture taken later on. And they want to be in that picture badly. Cash Asmussen was in France this morning riding track work. Concord brought him here and he'll have to be back there tomorrow, having travelled 8,000 miles for the chance to ride one and a quarter. As post time drew closer, as the field moved into the gates, prayers were going out to four-time Derby winner Bill Shoemaker, lying paralysed in hospital after a car crash, watching on television the race he used to dominate. They're all in line. And they're off in the Kentucky Derby. 
and Lost Mountain was squeezed a bit at the start. On the extreme outside, Best Pal shows early speed, but Sea Cadet toward the inside quickly takes command. 40-something right up there, and Corporate Report on the outside, Fly So Free, is fourth along the inside, and Hansel between horses is fifth at this point, past the stands for the first time. Three of them battle on the front end. Sea Cadet is expected on the inside, leads by a head. 40-something is second, and Corporate Report on the outside is right there third. Fly so free, tucked in at the rail, is racing fourth by a head. Allie David is fifth at this point. Then Hansel on the outside, six, six lengths off the leader. Then it's Lost Mountain at the rail, saving ground in seventh. Best Pal bullies his way between horses eight. And another review is on the move, ninth on the outside. Then comes Main Minister in tenth. It's four lengths farther back. Happy Jazz Band is 11th. Strike the Gold is 12th. Quintana on the outside is 13th. Then a gap of five to Paulus, wilder than ever, and Green Alligator, 16th and last at the back of the pack. The half mile in 46 and 2 fifth seconds. It's not exceedingly fast. Chris McCarron has slowed down the pace on the front end, and he still leads it with C. Cadet. 40-something, the long shot, part of the mutual field, up there in second, and now Corporate Report with a big move, and on the outside, Hansel is in gear. Main Minister is also charging up in the middle of the racetrack. Fly so free, bides his time fifth along the inside. Best pal, and strike the goal begins to roll on the outside. They're tightly packed as they move to the top of the stretch. C. Cadet on the inside leads by a head. Fly so free now moves quickly between horses. Strike the gold is closing stoutly in the middle of the racetrack. Main Minister is right there, and down the stretch they come. Strike the gold on the outside with Chris Antley taking command. Along the inside, best pal into the second spot. Main Minister is third, coming 70 yards to the finish and far away from the rail. Strike the gold wins the derby by a late... Strike the gold with Chris Antley in the saddle had beaten best pal and main minister home. His reward, that famous blanket of roses, and a great incentive. Should the pair win the remaining two legs of the Triple Crown, they will not only win a $5 million bonus, they will have become the stuff of legends. It's uh, quite staggering the support that we are getting from all over the country. It's the Melbourne Cup, in England the Grand National, but in the United States the one thoroughbred race that really matters is the Kentucky Derby. Earlier today Churchill Downs echoed to the strains of my old Kentucky home as horses and riders did battle for a place in racing history. Peter Donegan looks at one of the world's great racing classics. Every year early in May Churchill Downs becomes the mecca of the racing world. Today more than 130,000 people flock to the heart of bluegrass country to watch 16 three-year-olds race for the roses. They stood as one before the start for one of sport's moving moments. And when my old Kentucky home rang out amongst the stands that lay beneath the spires, there was hardly a dry eye in the house. And then for the 117th time, horses and riders lined up for America's greatest race. Would it be Fly So Free, winner of $1.38 million from seven wins? Perhaps nine to two chance strike the gold, a horse which would race a long way off the pace. Or maybe the handsome Virginian bred colt Hansel. Those questions were about to be answered. They're all in line. And they're off in the Kentucky Derby. American racing differs to ours in that they go basically flat out from the start. And it was the bobtailed sea cadet which made the running. But half a mile from home, Chris Antley urged strike the gold from well back around the field, passing horse after horse. And by the time they straightened, he was ready for a place in racing history. 70 yards to the finish and far away from the rail. Strike the gold wins the derby by a length and a half. It's every American owner's dream. And Strike the Gold's connection saw the finish in a state bordering on hysteria. <laughs> in winning, Strike the Gold joins names such as Secretariat in the record books. And he gave owners everywhere cause for hope. After all, in his first race, he could manage no better than ninth place in a field of 13. Now, he's perhaps the best three-year-old in the world. And while we're talking about quality American racehorses, ten years ago a mare called Began was born and bred specifically to win big money. There was only one problem, Began was born blind, but that hasn't stopped her living a quality life. 
It's another glistening morning in Kentucky bluegrass country, with the accent on the fertile earth and the aristocratic horses who occupy it. But here at Mill Ridge Farm, where five generations have called thoroughbreds their life, things are different. Ten years ago, this woman, Alice Chandler, saw this mare, Began, come into the world. Regally bred, but blonde. She's not aware that she has a problem. She, to herself, is a normal, normal horse. Now, she may be something slightly different to us, but to herself, everything's there because she doesn't know anything different. One week ago, Beacon gave birth to her fourth foal, a filly who's all eyes and legs and full of life, but cared for by a nurse mare because a blind mare could accidentally injure her young. And the sadness here is her theme of life is reduced to a surrogate mother, unable to bond with the very life she helped create. I guess maybe she's never had a chance to really develop any fondness or affinity for it. At least that's what I hope. But there is a family thread running through this story. The sire who was bred to Began lives here, and the first thing he does every morning is check over the fence as if he too can see the unique circumstances, even if the mare can't. And what's inspiring is this blind mare plays the genetic cards that were dealt her uncluttered by ego, devoid of self-pity. She connects not by sight, but by what she smells, hears, and feels her reality to be. It could have been a disaster. It could have been a real bad deal. And it's not. It's wonderful. If there is a romance to horse racing, maybe it begins here, at a place like Mill Ridge, where a family listened to its heart as well as its head and found communion with another living thing that money can't buy. Great story there from Nick Charles. Now to the